I'm just happy that Uncle Lou's not going to drink another Diet Coke or Coke from 1980. He must Boy, be ecstatic. Going He's going ballistic. I was on his live stream and, and talk about a guy that's not ready to party. You know, it's Uncle Lou right now. Yeah, I'm surprised he was able to do a live stream after the game. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's doing a lot of talking right now. He's having a good old time. I bet he's having a great time. Uh, Mark, you probably remember that team in 1980. What was that? Uh, Bud Ballou, Herschel Walker, yeah, Terry Lindsey Pope. Scott. Yeah. They beat uh, Notre Dame in, I think, was Dan Devine's last game down in the Sugar Bowl, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, because Jerry Faust took over in 81. So, yes, they did. Right. I remember it well. I, well, I shouldn't say I remember the game well. I watched every play of it. And uh, I think Harry Hogue was such a good defensive back. I think he got uh, like a top five to six Heisman uh, consideration. And, of course, Herschel Walker was the star. Right. Well, they it, the next two years they were in the Sugar Bowl. They ran into the state of Pennsylvania. Dan Marino threw an absolute dime to beat him in '81, and then uh, you know Air Paterno beat him in '82 with uh, Black Ledge and Kurt Warner. Yep. Yeah, two Both really good games. Good games. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I hey, congratulations to Georgia. They deserved it. Uh, I I thought that coming in, I thought that there was a case that they could have had the better roster. Obviously, you look at recruiting rankings, you know, they've got more, they've recruited, I believe, more five stars than anybody else in the country, if I'm not mistaken, right? I, I think we're second at Ohio State on overall five stars on rosters, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. I, I think that the difference in rosters, if you want to call it that, is so inconsequential. I would just say that these are the two best teams in the country uh, right. and, t- and two of the three most talented. I think it's pretty obvious to yeah. see that. And, and to see that and also match it up with the statistics. Well, you know, I, one thing I'm going to throw out there, Mark, you know, we always talk about quarterback play. Football is more quarterback driven now than it ever has been. It's interesting. You know, the, the, the last five national championship quarterbacks, you stop to think about it, Deshaun Watson, Tua, um, 18 was Trevor Lawrence, 19 Joe Burrow last year, Mac Jones, obviously Watson's going through a situation, but all pretty much starting quarterbacks in the NFL. I don't know. Is it a stretch to say that Stetson Bennett probably won't be a starting quarterback in the NFL? (laughs) Uh, I can't see it, but who am I to sit here and uh, count him out? True. True. Hey, he made the big plays in the fourth quarter. I mean, Georgia's defense kept him in that game, you know, and, yeah, you know, as an Ohio State fan, we remember losing a big time wide receiver in a national championship game, right, Mark? Yes. Yeah, who am I missing here? So, well, I was going to say Ted Ginn in, in 06. Oh, Ted Ginn. Yeah, sure. I mean, not to say I think that would have made a difference, but I think Ginn was a big part of that offense that year. It was a huge loss. But, I mean,. I, I don't think Alabama fans should make any excuses. Even though Jamison Williams was big for them this year, it would have been interesting to see had he not gotten hurt, you know, just kind of what effect that would have had. Because I wonder, you know, obviously you, you utilize your best receivers, but, I mean, Georgia was the better team, and their defense was incredible, by the way, and gave their offense a chance in that fourth quarter. I don't know what, what your overall thoughts on – Well, I think we tackle these kind of topics all the time, and that's one of the reasons why we're here. So, uh, you know, if an Alabama fan wants to call and just talk and speculate about if they would have had Jamison Williams, if they would have had John Mechie, I think that's valid. We we can go through the annals of time and talk about any championship scenario and, and injuries that occurred during the game or before the game. And, of course, uh, this whole... Nick Saban era was started with Colt McCoy, who was one of the best quarterbacks in the country, getting hurt uh, very early in the game. So Texas fans will raise that just so it's done with a a level of class and respect to say, hey, it's part of the game. We didn't play with those guys. We had to play with the guys that we have. That's that's also part of a championship team as well. 
uh, being able to sustain sure. the injuries and the next guy to step up and, and, and bring it home. So it, I think it's a balanced conversation to have. Right. And I, and I, I, I doubt Alabama fans if a key Georgia player got hurt and Georgia brought that up, uh, you know, you, you know, they would, you know, I wonder if they would let them use that against them. So, you know, you're right. You got to be fair about this both ways. Uh, but yeah, Georgia deserved that defense was incredible. Um, I thought in that fourth quarter, though, I really was wondering after Bennett had that turnover in the fourth quarter, if, um, you know, that was going to be curtains for, for them. But, you know, he had a few huge throws. You know, was wondering if his receivers were going to finally get open and make some plays, and it looks like they finally did in that fourth quarter. Yeah, they really did. They they really did. And um, I, like you, thought – I, I thought that it was very unfortunate and I'm not saying that they made the wrong call on the replay because technically, technically the ball left his hand before it was forward, before it, before he brought the arm forward. But I just felt that to be unfortunate that, you know, especially comparing that play to the Bryce young play, it, they're, they're very similar right. plays. You know, Bryce young was not throwing a football. He was basically spiking a football on the ground. Uh, but because of the rules, he gets away with that. And Stetson Bennett doesn't get away with what, yeah, was he trying to get rid of the football as well to avoid a sack? Yeah, that's what he was trying to do. He was trying to do the same thing Bryce Young. And I understand it's more than just intent. It's also, you know, what's the motion of the body? And at one point, you have to make a de delineation between fumble and pass thrown and you know the rules right. need to be clear and so the interpretation of the rules were 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 clear and they were correct but just um to see those two plays go in opposite directions i, I felt bad for georgia at the time because it just seemed to be again another time in which they wouldn't quite get the breaks yeah it was, it was amazing the way the the, the guy was able to still recover that oh. before getting out of bounds. Yes. You know, he's kind of fortunate, I think, that way, too. Wasn't he, Mark? Yeah, I, I don't know if he was trying to do that or not. It didn't look like he was. It looked like he was just picking up the football, but it turned out, at least in the moment. Yeah, I, I think, you know, it's going to be interesting going forward how these teams, I think these teams will obviously be ranked very high going into next year. Um, you know, going forward, you know, I think my Buckeyes will be ranked pretty high, uh, of course, but we'll see. Have to see who leads to go to the NFL and, and all of that going forward. Um, but, you know, congrats to Georgia. You took down the Death Star. It, it took you some tries, but you finally did it. And, you know, a good friend of mine is a, is a diehard Georgia fan. And, uh, I gave him a shout out tonight for their victory. So, uh, it was a big win. And, uh, Uncle Lou's going to party like it's 1980, right, Mark? There you go. All right, David, thank you so much for it. I appreciate it. All right, it. Mark. Have a good night. You take care of yourself. Yep, bye-bye.